Well, welcome to our Kings at Home Daily this morning. Uh, as we look at the last instalment of the story we've been following through John's Gospel. Uh, my name's Gough, by the way, one of the leaders here at Kings. And it's my pleasure and privilege to be sharing with you this morning. Hope you're well. Hope you're coping well. Hope you're uh, watching for one another and uh, keeping your heart your devotion to the Lord strong, as we were speaking about yesterday. Well, as I say, we've come to the end of John's Gospel. We're in chapter 21, and I'm going to be reading from verse 18. Just to say the, where we're up to, it's that uh, Jesus has been to the grave, been to the tomb, risen from the grave, and uh, and, and now he's met with the disciples. They, they went out fishing, and he was on the shore. He beckoned them, and uh, they had breakfast on the beach nice thing to do wouldn't it be would you yeah when we're allowed to be nice actually to see the sea again wouldn't it anyway um breakfast on the beach verse 18 jesus has been speaking to to peter that that, that painful conversation after peter's three denials jesus asked three the question three times do you love me do you love me more than these do, do, do you love me and it was it was really a, a humbling and a healing that that was going on in Peter and uh, that precious. Anyway, he then goes on to, to say this. Jesus says this to Peter. Truly, truly, I, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved, John, who was writing, was following them. This was the one who had leaned back on against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who's going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus uh, answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumour spread among the believers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus didn't say that he wouldn't die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. And we know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose even the whole world would not have room for the books to be written. So here we are at the end of the story. Um, story that began back in chapter one with John's wonderful words uh, describing Jesus. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God. Uh, and now he ends with the words, follow me, follow me, follow Jesus. And um, that's really the, uh, the whole aim and purpose of the gospel in your life and my life, that we follow Jesus. And even to the point where don't worry, don't, don't get over concerned with us. Well, why? It's not fair. Why is this happening in their lives? Peter is, you know, saying of John, well, what about what's happening to John? And, and Jesus says, look, don't, don't worry about that, about them. Your life is planned and purpose ordained of God specifically for you. There's a unique calling on your life. Don't get over preoccupied with what others are doing, where they're going. Just make sure that you are following Jesus. Precious, isn't it? The individual kindness of God towards us. Uh, precious, precious. But there's something interesting here that I want to draw out. Jesus tells Peter that he, he's going to. He actually will be. He's going to be crucified. You'll be. You'll be led where you don't want to go. Your arms stretched out. And it was. It was not obviously. It was not going to be easy. It was going to be awful. It was going to be horrible and painful. Of course, he wouldn't be the last martyr. There will be many, many, many. Even today, uh, across the world, there are many whose whose following of Jesus it, it lead, leads them to have to pay the ultimate price. Um, and, and you might think, well, how does that work? How, how, how do they do that? I mean, there, there's, some, there's some wonderful stories of the, the, the martyrs in this country. 
um, of course, actually living in Norwich, the first martyr of the Reformation was, uh, was martyred here in Norwich, and his name was Thomas Bilney. He was uh, put to death, on, it was during uh, Henry VIII's time. Anyway, Thomas Bilney, you can see a little plaque to him down by the river. Uh, anyway, um, there's some lovely stories, of, of, of beautiful stories of, of Christian martyrs. You, the Oxford martyrs, um, uh, Cranmer, Latimer and Ridley, um, who, who, were, who were burnt at the stake in, um, in Oxford. Uh, you, you can apparently, there's a memorial there to them, and you can see the, it is said, you can see the, the mark of where the fires used to, used to burn against the wall. But some lovely stories there. You may remember um, uh, Hugh Latimer turning to, to Ridley and saying, Master Ridley, play the man, Master Ridley. This day we shall, by God's grace, light such a candle, or is it flame, in this land as it as shall never be put out. <laughs> um, amazing and you might think how do they do that well do you remember when the apostle paul he talked of his thorn in the flesh and um uh, uh, he sought the lord to to take it away and and uh, the lord said to him my grace is sufficient for you um my strength is made perfect in weakness now there's something interesting here. I want to just take your take your attention to, and it's in verse verse 19. Jesus said to indicate the kind of death Peter would glorify God, and then he said, "Follow me." There's a thought. You see, the thing is, everything about us as followers of Jesus should glorify God. Should somehow honour him, should somehow point people to him. When you walk through today, your life and my life is actually all about glorifying God. It's about enjoying him. We spoke of devotion yesterday. And out of our devotion, our love for him, comes uh, 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 something of a reflection of his, uh, his love, his care for us, coming out in the way that we, we treat others. We're to live for the glory of God. Just being little pointers to the Lord, whatever we're going through. And it says that even in our death, we can glorify God. Wow, that's a, that's a thought. But it's true. And here's why. Not only does God give us grace for the moment, which I totally believe, but also we know what lies ahead. You see... Our devotion to Jesus is the the the, the beginning. It's the it, it's 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 where we it's where our, our walk with the Lord starts and grows. Our devotion to Jesus, and one day we're going to be with Him. We're going to see. We, we're going to actually be with Him. We're going to enjoy His presence. Now, you see, if you don't love the Lord, if you haven't got a devotion for the Lord, then uh, walking through difficult times is really hard and, and certainly when you when you approach the end of your days uh, if you haven't got a, a devotion to the lord and a longing to be with him it it, it 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 will be really painful now don't get me wrong death is horrible we 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 hate death jesus hated death he 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 he, he wept at the tomb of lazarus his friend lazarus death is horrible but here's the thing if we've got a devotion for jesus it won't just bring us through difficult times such as this, um, making, coming up like coming up in the morning to, 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 to play worship and to, uh, to turn attention to the Lord, as it were. It will also take us through the biggest challenge of all when we come to the end of our lives. I, I've been reading Pilgrim's Progress again recently, and um, as, as, you, you know the story, on the journey to the Celestial City, um, and there's one character, and he's called Mr. Steadfast. That's a good name, isn't it? And he's coming to the end of his journey, the Eternal City. And of course, there's the, the he's got to cross the river, you know, um, uh, crossing Jordan to the Promised Land. Negro spirituals used to uh, sing of this, and they when, when I pass over Jordan, a picture of dying. And and this is what this is what he he says to his companions: My foot is fixed, sure. My toilsome days are ended. He was ready for the eternal city, for the presence of the Lord. 
And I, you know, I want to, to, to encourage us today, let's live for the glory of God. Whatever is going on in your life, live for the glory of God. Lord, I want to I not just enjoy you, but, but allowing that devotion to overflow in the way I live my life so that it points people to you, especially through pain, sickness, and uh, when that day comes for me to breathe my last, may, it, may I glorify you uh, because of my devotion to you and the sure knowledge that I'm going to see your face. I'm going to be with you. Well, I hope that helps you, encourages you. Um, the last word, really, in this gospel, Jesus saying to you and me, follow me. Have a great day, dear friends, and uh, Marcus will be with us tomorrow morning for a new, a new study. Bye now.